story time with Mr. Beat. Yo, I'm Mr. Beat. Crazy Horse, the Native American war leader of the Oglala Lakota Sioux tribe, is considered to be one of the bravest war leaders in history. He became a symbol of resistance to American expansion. I first became interested in Crazy Horse when I visited the Crazy Horse Memorial as a kid. Located in the Black Hills of South Dakota, the monument currently being constructed will be the largest in the world when it's finally completed. However, it might take a while to get done. Anyway, I had thought that this must be somebody special if they're willing to carve a mountain to honor him. Little is known about Crazy Horse, but here is his story. Once upon a time, probably sometime in the year 1840, Crazy Horse was born somewhere on the Great Plains near present-day Rapid City. His dad was an Oglala Lakota, and his mom was a Mini Kanju Lakota. Some say Crazy Horse got his name after his dad, who was also named Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse stood out growing up. For starters, he looked different than most Lakota. Although we'll never know what he really looked like because he was never photographed, he was described as having brown, curly hair and a light complexion. When Crazy Horse was a child, the Lakota Sioux was as powerful as it had ever been. But the older he got, the more Americans began to take their land and threaten their way of life. Crazy Horse was about 14 when a group of white men entered a Lakota camp to take prisoner a man who had killed someone's cow. They were American troops. After Chief Conquering Bear demanded the troops to leave, violence broke out. One of the soldiers shot the chief, and the Lakotas returned fire and ended up killing 29 soldiers. Crazy Horse witnessed the death of Conquering Bear firsthand and would never trust whites again. It was shortly after that when Crazy Horse began to have trance visions. In his visions, he saw his future, that he would lead his people in battle and never be killed in battle, and that he would be a protector of his people. As conflicts increased between the Lakota and the United States, Crazy Horse's reputation as a warrior grew, and so did his fame among the Lakota, thanks to his bravery and fighting ability. In 1865, he was named a shirt wearer, or war leader, by the tribe. On December 21, 1866, Crazy Horse led an attack on Captain William J. Fetterman and his brigade of 80 men. Fetterman and all his men were killed. It was the U.S. Army's worst defeat on the Great Plains up to that time. In 1867, Crazy Horse's love life interrupted his life as a warrior. You see, when Crazy Horse was a young man, he had fell in love with a woman named Black Buffalo Woman. However, she married another man named No Water. In spite of this, in the fall of 1867, Crazy Horse convinced Black Buffalo Woman to run away with him. After No Water found out, he grabbed a gun and hunted the two of them down. After he found them in a teepee, he shot Crazy Horse in the jaw. Needless to say, that relationship didn't work out. Eventually, No Water apologized to Crazy Horse and gave him three horses. However, because Crazy Horse was with a married man's wife, he was stripped of his title as shirt wearer. Crazy Horse later married a woman named Black Shaw, and they bore a daughter named They Are Afraid of Her. Tragically, his only daughter died at the age of three. Meanwhile, the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868 guaranteed the Lakota the Black Hills Territory, which was sacred land to the tribe. This seemed to calm Crazy Horse a bit, and he did not fight for a while. He was still rebellious. He never committed his signature to any document and refused to be photographed. He also still resented the fact that the Lakota land he grew up on was now under the white man's control. Also, white explorers increasingly trespassed the Black Hills in search of gold and other resources. By 1875, miners were flooding into the Black Hills, and thanks to a gold rush, no one could keep them out. The United States government attempted to buy the Black Hills from the Indians, but the Indians refused. Then, the U.S. ordered all bands of Lakota and Cheyenne to report to the reservation by January 31, 1876 to negotiate. Crazy Horse was among a sizable number of Native Americans who never showed up. When the U.S. military tried to round them up, the Black Hills War would begin. Crazy Horse was very active in the Black Hills War. He teamed up with Chief Sitting Bull to lead a force of 1,500 Lakota and Cheyenne warriors against American General George Crook in what became known as the Battle of the Rosebud on June 17, 1876. Crook had planned to invade Sitting Bull's camp, but Crazy Horse led a surprise attack on his troops that forced them back. A week later, 
Crazy Horse fought in one of the most famous battles in American history, the Battle of Little Bighorn. Again led by Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull, the Cheyenne and Lakota wiped out General George Custer and his highly regarded 7th Cavalry. It was incredibly lopsided and is probably the greatest victory ever by Native Americans over U.S. troops. An Arapaho warrior named Waterman who fought in the battle said Crazy Horse was, quote, the, the bravest, bravest man I ever saw. saw. He, he rode, rode closest, closest to the soldiers, soldiers yelling, yelling to his, his warriors. warriors. All, All the soldiers were shooting at him but he, but he was, was never, never hit, hit, unquote. After Custer went down, the U.S. Army struck back hard. While Sitting Bull led his followers to escape to Canada, Crazy Horse stayed and kept fighting. On January 8, 1877, he led the Lakota and Cheyenne in the, the Battle, Battle of Wolf, Wolf Mountain. Mountain. But the winter was rough on Crazy Horse and his followers. As the food began to run out, his followers began to abandon him. Fearing the safety of his people, Crazy Horse finally did something he had refused to do for so long. On May 6, 1877, he rode to Fort Robinson in Nebraska and surrendered. For the next four months, Crazy Horse lived in his village near the Red Cloud Agency. By this time, he was a celebrity, and he was honored at the last Sundance of 1877, one year after the victory at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Later that summer, because he had defied orders to stay on the reservation to put his sick wife in the care of his parents, he was arrested by the U.S. Army. He was returned to Fort Robinson, no one knows exactly what caused it, but on September 5, 1877, there was a struggle between Crazy Horse and the guards detaining him. Crazy Horse was stabbed with a bayonet by one of the guards and died later that night. Today, Crazy Horse is still celebrated as a brave leader who refused to give up his fight to preserve his people's way of life. Author Chris Hedges writes, quote, there, there are, are few, few resistance, resistance figures in American history, history as noble as Crazy Horse, Horse, unquote. Although the creation of the Crazy Horse Monument has been somewhat controversial, the respect for this great man has been practically universal. The end.